all of a sudden, three masked assailants came barging into uh, my compassion club, kicking a door open and banishing a firearm. As they uh, continued on to the safe room, they began filling their bags with cannabis and what little cash we had in our till at the time. Hey, I'm Manisha Krishnan and I cover weed for Vice. Toronto dispensaries have had a rough year as cops have continued to raid dispensaries despite the fact that weed is supposed to be legal by next year. But that's not the only thing they've had to deal with. I started hearing more and more about dispensaries being robbed, and when I checked in with the cops, they told me that as of spring of this year, there'd been more dispensary robberies than in all of 2016. And those are just the ones that they know about. I'm currently concealing my identity because I'm very concerned that my patient base could be potentially put at risk. And even if it's a few days with patients without their medicine, that's, that's too much for me to handle. Some dispensary owners say the reason why cops don't know about all the robberies is because dispensary owners are scared to report, knowing that by calling for help, they could face serious consequences. We will seize any illegal narcotics on the premises during the robbery investigations as we would do in any incident. We got lots more, boys. Please, like if an owner comes to you and says, hey, I just got robbed, and then you come in and charge the owner, why, like, why would they come to you? Sure. Let, me, let me just grab it. You're making the dispensaries victims. It's illegal. The only way people can buy weed legally in Canada is by getting a medical license that allows them to buy through a licensed producer or grow their own. Some patients have said the LP system doesn't work for them and that they'd rather buy from dispensaries where they can access a wider range of products. I didn't call the police because I was worried I'd be raided for a second time or robbed for a second time. It would be horrible because even since this robbery, running as a non-for-profit, it's been very difficult. So if that was to happen again um, by the police, we, we might have to shut our doors permanently. Many dispensary owners told Vice they weren't willing to pay that cost, and calling the cops to investigate wasn't an option. So I went to Toronto Police Headquarters to find out what the cops have to say about it. Toronto Police have said in the past that if dispensary owners report robberies, products could be confiscated and charges could be laid. Is that still the case? And do you think that that's a disincentive for reporting robberies? Any selling of marijuana that isn't licensed by the federal government is against the law. The idea that dispensaries somehow have some charmed status, that they're not subject to the law as anyone else would be, I think is an indication of the fact that they simply don't get it. If they don't report, then I think we're entitled to draw the conclusion that they don't care for their employees, they don't care for their customers, and they're quite prepared to enable violent armed robbers. I don't know if everybody's playing by the same rules. There very well might be a huge criminal element. I think it would be hard for a police officer to have an active investigation on someone and then to watch them to open up a storefront all of a sudden and, and, and under the guise of medicinal cannabis. The ones that have been selling to anyone to jeopardize the community. And the court said medical marijuana must be made available. Jody Emery co founded a chain of recreational dispensaries that have been both robbed and raided. Vice caught up with her in Toronto where she was out on bail for trafficking charges this spring. Our cannabis culture location here in Toronto got robbed and a witness called the police. And when the police came, they took the rest of the product and money. And they told everyone that when dispensaries get robbed, they expect them to call the cops. But they said, when you do call us, we're going to take everything you've got and maybe lay charges. I worry about all of the dispensaries who are put in harm's way by thieves who know the cops are not going to protect the stores and the cost of being victimized twice. There are a lot of issues with the legal access through the LP system. Right now, people are having their medicine go missing all the time. It's not arriving through the postal service. Uh, there's large minimum orders of only one particular product, very little education on choosing which product. We offer a host of things LPs cannot. 
So with that high THC, you might feel like that can bring on the anxiety, but because it's got such a high CBD rate, it's really gonna drop it down. Okay, I'll, I'll go with the granddaddy purple. My first thought when I heard about the robberies, the first one I was like, wow, my gosh, well, I, I suppose it was gonna happen at some point, but then it became almost like a weekly occurrence. Uh, when the robberies happened, we upped the security. Aside from the exterior buzz entry, we have cameras everywhere so you can see every angle. There is a panic button here. If I got robbed, for sure I would call the police. It is my responsibility to protect my members and my staff. I understand that maybe charges could be pressed, but I'm willing to face those. Do you think that if police stopped raiding these dispensaries, that people might be more likely to report these robberies? The idea that because illegal businesses are raising large amounts of money, we should not enforce the law is, is perverse. There are people who are making large amounts of money, huge amounts of money. I have no idea whether they're paying taxes on it or not. We have no idea where they're buying it from. Are they buying it from organized crime? We don't know. So you have a public safety risk, you have a health risk, and the suggestion that we should stop enforcing the law, to me, is breathtaking. All of my products have a very small group of people that I'll, I'll get from who are federally licensed, who to, are legal to grow and have their own cannabis. I think I've seen Hells Angels come in my club and get medicine. And that's about as involved as Hells Angels have ever been in this fucking club or any club that I've seen. I know most of my suppliers personally, um, and they're diverse, but I'd say mostly they fall into the hippie category, not the organized crime category. Uh, it was either themselves personally that were touched by something that cannabis helped them with, or someone close to them that cannabis helped them with. And so they develop products to treat themselves and treat their loved ones. The Toronto Drug Squad um, really paints everybody with the same brush. It's like a zero tolerance, regardless of how somebody operates, regardless of if there's complaints, and that's really unfair. That's why we need to have some at least interim regulation. But so far, none of those interim regulations have been put into place, which means at least one more year of chaos for dispensary owners who now not only fear raids, but more robberies. According to the criminal code, I am a criminal. But the way I feel is just because something is illegal does not make it wrong. I do this every day, putting myself at risk. I recognize that and it does cause some stress, but it's a risk that I'm willing to take. There is a real and a very serious need and I'm satisfying that need to my members.